एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज नॉट आर यूजुअल डीआईवाई होम इम्प्रूवमेंट प्रोजेक्ट बट इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ वी सरेंडर आर इंडियन पासपोर्ट वाइल वी आर विजिटिंग इंडिया सो आई टेक यू लिल बैक इन टाइम ऑन द ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ ऑफ नवम्बर वी वॉज स्केड्यूल्ड फॉर फॉर आर ओथ सेरेमनी फॉर आर कैनेडियन सिटीजनशिप and um we requested the agent uh, in during our oath ceremony that we will be traveling in a few days to expedite our citizenship certificate um she was really kind and courteous enough to and she also checked with the clerk during the oath ceremony and as soon as the oath ceremony got over we sent our uh, the signed oath affirmation document to them and uh, they did process our citizenship um certificate and on the same evening on the 29th of november we uh, did get the oaths um, we did get our citizenship certificate um the next day uh, we applied for our passport uh, even though we stay in kitchena but i personally wanted the new design so we drove all the way from kitchena to the mississauga passport office uh, i didn't have any appointment it was a walk in i stood in the line uh, along with my wife for uh, about 25 uh, 25 to 30 minutes outside we went around 11 o'clock um to avoid the morning rush do not go at 8:30 am when the passport office opens we, um, so we stood in the line uh, and then when we went inside we requested for the express service of the passport it is an additional 50 dollars per application um they did not ask for any travel documents but uh, they gave, uh, they promised that the uh, passport will be um will be printed and available within the next two business days since there was a saturday sunday following uh in between uh monday our passport was ready um and then uh, in um it was 4th of Jan um, december when our passport was ready i went to the mississauga passport office to pick it up so on the 4th of morning when i collected my passport i was ready with all the documents for my uh, applying for my indian e visa uh, you can save the application uh i was just waiting for my passport number and when i collected the passport i entered that number uh paid the 41 dollars passport uh usd 40 dollars plus 1 dollar transaction fees uh, on the e visa portal and um on the 5th of january we drove from kitchena to toronto uh we had two passports with us that time canadian and indian but um we always kept the indian passport with us never used it anywhere and did not show it to our um to anyone even though we had us visa on our indian passport but since uh, with canadian passports you can enter uh, us uh, canadians do not need a us visa so we showed it uh, at the rainbow bridge uh, in niagara falls and then we reached new york city on the 5th of evening so we applied uh, our e visa and then we drove to new york while we were in new york uh, we stayed in manhattan at my brother's apartment for two nights and then our flight to india was on the 7th so while we were in new york for two nights uh, our e visa was processed it usually takes 24 hours and you pretty uh, sure that it will be granted uh, to us before we fly out of um, new york uh, while uh, searching on the web because since we drove and there is no parking at my brother's apartment i wanted to park uh, somewhere and i came across this website called parkon.com i'll leave the link in the description below and this uh, parking lot was very cheap as compared to other parking lots which were around um, jfk airport uh, this was a uh, indoor uh, parking spot and that to self parking so i didn't have to leave my keys with anyone um, we uh, we were in india for a good 25 days so i had to find a parking spot for that period of time and this costed me only about usd 5 per day as compared to other places which were about 20 25 dollars per day so this parking spot is uh, in a area called jamaica which is about a 20 25 minute drive from the jfk airport and uh, we took a uber from uh, this parking spot uh, and then it just costed us about 35 dollars uh, to reach the jfk airport um, just for safety reasons uh, we did keep an air tag inside the car and we were uh, we were monitoring while we were in india so um we were pretty sure that the keys were, were with us and um the park the car was parked in a safe spot so we didn't have to really worry about it um and then we reached the jfk airport at the jfk airport we had our canadian passport and e visa we just showed it to the check in um counter and uh, we we proceeded to our flight uh, there was a short transit in doha and then we flew uh to delhi upon reaching delhi uh this was the first time that we were landing as a canadian citizens so instead of taking um if you have ever uh, arrived at uh, delhi airport instead of taking the 
um, counters on the left. We this time had to go on the right, where it was for foreign nationals and um, for OCI holders. And also there's a separate uh, set of kiosk who had e-visa. So we went to that uh, kiosk. The um, the immigration agent, uh, immigration official was very kind to us, and he just did all the paperwork, and we were um, we were um, granted the admission. And we straight away went home after doing all the formalities at the Delhi airport. So this was our experience uh, reaching India from uh, US. So if you are planning a trip to India and you stay in Canada, so do explore options of flying out of US. There are uh, maybe you can take a flight from Toronto to um, JFK and then fly from there. Usually the flights from Toronto to JFK does not include baggage. So it ends up being uh, almost the same as uh, flying from Canada to India. But uh, if you uh, if you love driving and if you can drive, then it's an eight hour drive from um, from our uh, city Kitchener to uh, New York City. Uh, we took two small uh, breaks in between and um, I would say do go through the toll route option. Uh, the tolls are very, very cheap as compared to Canada uh, roads, uh, about only eight, ten dollars one way and uh, and you will get the um, invoices in at your mailing address in Canada. So you don't need to worry about it even if you do not have an easy pass. And if you cannot drive to uh, New York, um, there are trains and buses from Toronto Union Station. And uh, in Kitchener also, we have a bus service. Flix bus is the service uh, which takes you uh, to New York City and they drop you at the Penn Station or in the Midtown. So you can explore that option as well if you're traveling solo and you don't, you don't want to drive um, that long. So coming to the main point of the topic, uh, which is how did we surrender our Indian passport in India and what was our experience like? So to begin with, I will uh, share my computer screen and I will go through as to what the uh, initial process is, which you can also initiate while you're in Canada and uh, then submit it uh, once you land in India. Okay, this is the website passportindia.gov.in and um, you have to... Um, this is the home page basically uh, if you haven't made a if you haven't made an account earlier you just click on new user, user registration and fill up all this information and make an account uh, there will be a link sent to your email address and once you verify that link you simply have to just log into the uh, website and after logging in I have logged in and this is how it looks like you have to go on the applicant home page and then there will be an option of apply for surrender certificate so you just have to click on that uh, passport number date of issue date of expiry and place of issue this is at exactly as per your indian passport so you just have to fill up uh, all that information here uh, reason for surrendering it is by default um acquiring foreign nationality and um, in my case it was canada um, so we select that we became uh, this is the acquisition date is the date on uh, as as printed on your citizenship certificate you have to select that and then click on next so all this information you have to um, select so uh, let's select what is applicable to me um, married and graduate and you can select or you can just ignore the visible distinguishing mark um, and then on next page just keep on filling up this information here it did give me some error so um, okay yeah so you can uh, fill up father's name mother's name spouse name uh, spouse nationality as well so my wife is also canadian now so i select canada and then click on next and um, whatever is your home address everything um, you have to select as per that um, So once you select everything, just keep on filling the information. And this place, um, you can either mention any city or state in India. Uh, not necessarily that where where you're filling the form in. They usually do not uh, bother about this. So even if you're in Canada, you can just select any city, state in India. It doesn't matter. 
uh, click on I agree save my details and this is a uh, application reference number uh, if you're not ready to submit the application you can always come back and retrieve this application but I would recommend submitting it at one go uh, you can preview the application form um, so if everything looks good you can close this no need to take a print of it right now uh, but if you find any um, discrepancies here you can uh, close the screen go back to the previous screens and um, make the changes and once you're ready just hit on i agree and submit the form so once your form is submitted they will ask you to make a payment um, you have to click on the first link and uh, the best part about uh, sending the passport in india is that the payment is flat 500 rupees they won't charge you extra for postal services uh, not uh, photograph not correct or any other miscellaneous services like uh, i have heard of a lot of people being harassed by bls staff and then they make them pay a lot um, for courier charges xyz charges and they end up spending 200 dollars uh, for an application uh, for sending their passport in Canada uh, versus uh, if you uh, send it in India it's only 500 rupees so the payment mode um, you can either pay through UPI like Paytm or other uh, GPay or you can use a debit or credit card and then make a payment once you have made the payment um, you will go uh, you will go on this screen called view saved submitted applications and you will have your application there you just click on the relevant one um, and then there will be an option called view print submitted form you click on that and this is the form which you have to take a printout of uh, you don't need to take a, a paste a photograph right now so whatever information you had filled in everything will uh, pop up here and then you can um, take a print of it you can even save it and then save it as a pdf and then send it to your family or friend who can who has an access to the printer and then they can take it for you you can do all this while sitting in uh, while sitting in canada uh, print of the form and then when you click come to the receipt section there would be an uh, this option which says payment receipt this would be uh, available for taking a printout of the receipt so uh, since i have not made the payment it was just a uh, for um, just dummy form that's why uh, this option is not highlighted but this will get highlighted and you have to take a print of the payment receipt as well so that's that's the that's everything you have to do on the portal um, on the passport india government side so the application process on the portal was quite straightforward but the real challenge came at the time of uh, submitting the application in the passport office. So we reached the regional passport office in Delhi, which is uh, at the Bika Jikama place uh, behind Hyatt Hotel uh, in Arkipuram. Um, we went to the main entrance, but then the security guard asked us to go at the back of the building. When we went there, um, there was another security guard. He asked us to uh, for our file numbers, which is on the top of the application uh, form and he wrote in his register and then he directed us to another room so this room was uh, on the first floor basically it was a general inquiry counter and then there were um, quite, um, about five ten people waiting over there uh, for their turn to come so when our turn came uh, the officer checked our documents and then he instructed us to go to second floor in another room and he just signed it and then we went to the second floor so I forgot to uh, tell you that uh, the surrender certificate does not need any appointment. It's just walk-in. So uh, like for passports, we can do um, appointments. There is no requirement of appointments and it's a simple walk-in. So when we reached the second floor, uh, there were small cubicles, uh, typical government office style. And uh, we asked one gentleman that uh, we would like to surrender our passport and what's the process. And uh, he looked at our documents and he also saw the signature. But then he told us that this one doesn't have any name um, as to who uh, that person has delegated this uh, application to. So you have to go downstairs again and get the person's name on it. Then uh, my wife and I both went downstairs. We stood in that uh, small queue again, about five, ten people waiting ahead of us. Uh, when our turn came, um, that's a, a same person at the general inquiry counter. He uh, wrote um, mis um, the name of the concerned person, and so his name his name was Lakshman. He he wrote Lakshman's name, and then we went upstairs. 
um, but when we went to the same counter on the second floor, uh, we um, they told us that Mr. Lakshman, who is the only person who does the passport surrender applications in that particular office, was on leave and we have to come the next day. Uh, we were quite surprised as to how come only one person is designated for this kind of work and we had no other option but uh, to leave for that day. So a good one and a half hours got wasted and then we came back home. Luckily our uh, place was quite close to the uh, regional passport office, the Bikaji Kama place office and then the next day when we came, um, we uh, we stayed away, went to the second floor after um, after giving our details to the security guard downstairs. Um, so luckily, uh, Mr. Lakshman was present in the office. He looked at our documents and um, he asked us to uh, write a letter. So basically, uh, I will uh, share how that, uh, like what all he asked us to write in that letter. Uh, this letter uh, was just a self-declaration. It was nowhere mentioned in um, those documents as to um, if this kind of letter is required or not. But he asked us to write this letter and we had no other option but to um, write that letter. So uh, after writing that letter, it was around 12 o'clock and he asked us that we uh, make sure that you come before 12 o'clock because 12 o'clock was his lunch time. And uh, we quickly wrote that letter and again went to him. So by the time uh, we went to him, he was handling someone else's case and um, it was time for him to go for lunch. And then like a typical government office, he just went for his lunch and we kept on waiting. Um, he came back at one o'clock. Um, he then he looked at uh, all our documents. So uh, I will provide the list of documents which you need to take along with you. So basically, uh, you would need your original uh, foreign passport or like uh, in our case, it was Canadian passport, along with two copies of self attested uh, copies of the bio page. So Canadian passport only has the front page. It doesn't have anything at the back. So just take two photocopies of that um, original Indian passport along with uh, photocop uh, along with photocopies of the first two pages and the last two pages, two sets of each and uh, self attested again. Uh, your uh, foreign citizenship certificate. So in our case, it was an e-certificate. So you can simply print that um, back to back, single sided, doesn't matter and self attest that as well. Um, next was uh, two passport size photographs. So it has to be white background, 3.5 by 4.5 centimeter. They are not very particular about um, like how much uh, percentage of the face versus the shoulder should be visible. You can get it done from any photo studio in your city. Very cheap, um, like how BLS um, finds out mistakes over here. Um, they, they do not do anything of that sort. And uh, then obviously your uh, printed um, passport sender application form, which, we, which, uh, which was downloaded from the portal along with the printout of the payment, um, payment receipt and the self-declaration letter. Uh, in which basically he asked us to write three things. So first was um, what was the subject of surrendering in passport due to acquiring foreign citizenship. And um, it said uh, he asked us to write the Indian passport number, uh, the reason for surrendering Indian passport and when was the uh, last time you traveled on the Indian passport. And uh, the last thing um, was that uh, just to write that I, um, you do not hold any criminal records and um, criminal convictions and hold a clean record. Uh, so these are the three things he asked us to write on that letter and then just sign it and give it to him. So finally, after he came back from lunch and uh, he got free from the other client, uh, he um, he took all the documents from uh, from us. You have to paste one photograph on the application form, sign in the box, which is just beneath the um, photograph in, inside that box. And um, yeah, so he just took all those documents. He scanned all the documents and we were just waiting for him to do everything. And uh, once everything was done, he told us that his part of the work is done and he, we need to get that, uh, we need to get it signed from his manager. So basically he was, he's just like a clerk and he will just uh, do all the uh, scanning and everything. And then it has to be acknowledged and confirmed by his manager. 
so you have to go downstairs and get it signed so we again came downstairs um his um so it was to be done by a person named mr jimmy um and then when i spoke to um the guards who were sitting outside his office they told us uh, they told us that mr jimmy has gone for meetings and they don't know when he'll come back so first of all they they never disclosed the names of the officers i got uh, i found out these names from the rti uh, section of the passport uh, website so all these names are mentioned over there they just mentioned sir and room number and all that stuff so they do not uh, disclose any names uh, i have no idea why they do such things but we just kept on waiting over there and um, finally uh, his ea came and then he told us that okay let's go to the uh, let's go to the same person mr lakshman upstairs and we will uh, we will have a word with him so he asked me to wait outside while he spoke to mr lakshman uh, after a few minutes he came back and he told me that uh, okay you can uh, come some other day and then get this signed uh, by mr uh, lakshman and we will give uh, by mr jimmy and we will give you a call so i was quite surprised that um, passport office will they give us a call or not i was quite apprehensive of the fact that i will have to go back and then check on my uh, surrender application so luckily after two days i got a call from the passport office uh, it was a thursday and then they asked me uh, they told me that you can come on a friday morning at 10 am and collect your uh, surrender certificate i was quite surprised uh, when i went there on a, on friday 10 am everything was ready uh, what mr lakshman did was he took our indian passport he put a cancel stamp on it he took photocopies of it uh, with the cancel stamp he asked us to um sign it he kept that copy with him and he also had two copies of the surrender certificate so one he asked us to sign and the other one he gave it to me um so um in all in all it took us three visits to the passport office i've heard people getting the uh, surrender certificate in two hours also but this was our experience how uh, we surrendered our passport um uh, in in delhi office um so it was basically time versus money in canada if you surrender it takes about 8 uh, weeks of processing time and uh, almost 200 dollars per application whereas in india yes it did take us 3 uh, three visits to the passport office waited for a couple of hours but everything was done in 500 rupees there was a small mistake which i made in my application personally uh, where the passport sec- uh, passport details section is mentioned i by mistake entered my canadian passport number and the issue date and expiry date but mr lakshman was very kind enough that he made those changes at his and in the portal without um, asking me to redo all the applications or i'll have to come back again or like um any um asking any sort of charges or anything what bls usually does over here so if you are planning uh, if you already have your canadian citizenship if you have your e visa or if you are planning a trip to india i would definitely suggest that uh, if you have um like few hours in a day or maybe you can spare ha- uh, two half days then you should definitely visit your regional passport office and surrender your passport uh, in india um versus doing it in canada one it is very expensive and second what all the stress bls uh, gives to us and um, and uh, also you have to take an appointment at bls which is quite impossible of taking uh, with a lo- with a huge lineup there are a lot of questions about oci also that if a person can apply oci in india yes you can apply oci in india but with a e visa you cannot so uh, a person has to stay in india for a minimum of 6 months and you would need a different type of visa so e visa is basically tourist visa uh, you would need some um, some type of like an like an entry visa which and if you are staying if you have already stayed in india for a period of 6 months then you can apply for oci in, um, in india uh, we were there only for 3 weeks so it was an applicable in our case uh, we'll have to deal with bls once uh, and apply for oci so all in all uh, um, my experience was not very great but uh, was satisfactory uh, while applying for my surrender certificate uh, in india it did save us a lot of uh, money as compared to 200 dollars for one application versus 500 rupees in india 
so this was uh, this was my experience uh, surrendering passport in india hope you liked it um, please do share with uh, your friends and family or whoever is uh, planning a visit to india and they would like to surrender their passports in india yes it's doable and uh, everything is the same they will give you a surrender certificate which you can use for applying oci once you're back in canada or your uh, or your country we also do a lot of home improvement projects so this was a little off topic but uh, since there were a lot of queries so i thought of making this video and if you're interested in home improvement projects uh, do check out uh, our channel and we have a lot of diy home improvement projects and uh, please subscribe share and uh, like this video see you next time bye